All right. Well, we've we've been going on a roll here, so I'm going to try and stay with the rhythm. Hello, everybody, okay. and welcome to a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I'm your host. Joining me today is Eric Hughes. Hey, how's it going? Doing well. How are you, buddy? I'm hanging in there. Groovy, man. Well, we've also got special co-host, recurring friend, Cam <laughs> Sneed. Hey, guys. Things out here. How you doing? <laughs> were you trying to give friend. a high five, or were you doing a slow motion, or what's a half rainbow? On? Oh, a half rainbow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I really like your name. is very simple. It's only two syllables, but the sneed really brings out the vibrato when I say your name. Yeah. So I've been told it's like okay. Yeah, we can move on. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Very good. We've we're also joined by a very special guest. He's coming to us from the Zoom room. He's trained and performed at the Second City Chicago with the likes of Steve Carell, Stephen Colbert, and more. He was the artistic director at the Second City Hollywood and has taught workshops and performed worldwide. Everybody, please welcome David Rosowski. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey. From the Zoom room. I top the building I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I went with Zoom Room. I just now I'm I like it. it. We call it the Zoom Room. Uh, my my girlfriend and I we call it the Zoom Room. But yeah, uh -huh. uh, so I, I I'll show you. Uh -huh. I'll show you. This is the Zoom Room. It looks like this. And uh, here's the outside of the Zoom Room. Uh, for those of you who are on radio, I'm showing that I've got a garden that has uh, animals in it, and we've got a flying saucer <laughs> in the back there. But uh, you decided to listen, yeah. to not watch it. So there you go. There you go. Exactly. And Cam just revealed, I think, a fin. Is that right? Little mer, mer person Cam. Yeah. He's, mm -hmm. He is. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, you guys saw that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that did slip. That did slip. Um, I, oh, I, Cam, you got your name is like Cam, Cam Sneed, which I yeah. want to pronounce Cam's Need. Cam's Need. Yeah, Cam's that works need? too. <laughs> what is Cam's Need, everybody? What's Cam's Need? <laughs> Or Cam it sounds like a Z charity. Need. Yeah. Cam's, yeah, it does like Cam, give camsneed.com. Cam's Cam's yeah, camsneed. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think, Eric, I think it's an org. I think it's I was going to say, yeah, yeah, that's true. Cam's kids. Oh, Cam's kids. Can I get a dot gov? What do I have to do to get a dot gov? <laughs> you know what? You just asked for it. You got a dot gov. Oh, Cam's yeah. Camsneed.gov. Dot <laughs> edu. Dot edu. Dot edu. Yeah. <laughs> Dot edu, edu, edu is, I mean, listen to the way that rolls off. Dot edu, David Rosowski, dot edu. Dot edu. <laughs> dot edu like sounds that. like an Ethiopian name. Dot edu. It's my friend, dot edu. It kind of <laughs> does, yeah. Dot edu. Dot edu, dot edu from edu. Ethiopia. Yeah, okay. that guy runs. Man, oh, can he run? That can be, I think dot that edu. could be Cam's last name. Cam Sneed, dot edu. Because Cam dot Sneed edu. is in his, like, <laughs> first name. Yeah, but, Cam Sneed, dot edu. Oh. Dot edu. <laughs> He's going to give Usain Bolt a run for his money. All right, guys, fine. I'll change my name. I'll Thank do it. You. I'll get Cam, Cam Sneed Adidio. Sneed Adidio. Sneed Adidio. <laughs> all, all one last one. I don't know if you want to put Sneed Adidio. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, that, that might not be good. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll workshop it. But David, I'm by the end thank, now. thank you for joining the show. We wanted to talk a little bit about you. But first, oh, wanted to check in. How is everything going? It's been a tough time for everyone. We just want to check in on our guests. Why has this been a tough time? Uh, just, Is there you something know, you going look? on that I don't know? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we just learned that Cam is a mer person and he has an extra last name. So that's been uh -oh. tough for me specifically. That has been tough. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> me too. Um, it's news to me. <laughs> how do you think uh, I feel? I feel like every day is, um, well, it's what fresh hell. And every day is also, um, how are you adapting? That's the question we need to ask everybody. Hey, how are you adapting? Because every day is, like right now, um, I, I, in California, like where I am, I, I'm going to show you another picture. Um, I can't, I, I'm sorry, I got to show you this. But it's, no, no. you know, it's like yeah, I want to stay outside 530 at 6 o'clock. And it's, it has not been this smoggy in Los Angeles in 35 years. So that's where we are right now. Wow. Um, but you know what we were talking about earlier, like there, there, are, there are benefits about what we're doing here. And, I, and, I, and again, it's how are you adapting? What new things are, is happening? I don't think we'd be having this conversation if it, weren't for, uh, if it weren't for what we're going through right now. And so for me, that's a positive thing. 
That, mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. For us as well. I mean, mm -hmm. we may or may not have orchestrated this whole thing, but you know, just to get to you. But... I, I want to thank you and I want to punch you, but I first want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to punch you. You sound like my wife now. That's. Uh... <laughs> uh, she told me to say that. I want to thank you. I want to punch you. Uh, Classic um, wife. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about you. You've been doing improv for quite a, 50 years. 50 years, 50 years. I've been doing theater for, uh, I've been doing theater. Uh, let's see, I'm 61. So I've been doing theater for uh, 51 years. Uh, wow. and, and what's really interesting is, uh, uh, last year I woke up one day and I went, Oh, this is what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're always going, I wonder what I'm going to be when I grow up. And then one day I, I like, this is going to happen to everybody. You're, you're all going to realize that there's going to be a moment in your life where you're going to, this is what I'm going to be when I grow up. And this is what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> I mean, I, does that make sense? Totally. It Meaning does. like you, you, you're sure, like you finally realize that this is what you want to do after trying it for <laughs> It's too late to I've back been, up. It, there's no, but isn't that true? There's two, what am I going to do? I'm a 61 year old pasty white guy. What am I going to do? But do keep doing what it is that I'm doing. And so, uh, it's really become, uh, it, it's become an improvised life. And uh, I'm really, I'm really blessed in that I was born at the time that I was born. I hung out with the people I was able to hung, hang out with. Um, and I have a, you know, I have a, a family that has always encouraged me to do what it is that I've wanted to do. Um, and I think that's really important, you know, to have a, a to, to have your to have your peeps and to have your tribe behind you going do this do this do this and that's what I, what I'm getting just from talking to you all is it's uh, you found your people for now and these yeah. people that you yeah. found help you um, it's an existential experience all you're going look what we're doing together we're doing all these things together we're existing together at this moment we're experiencing these things together and brought we the small the small amount of that we chatted before we went live um you guys you guys because you're guys uh you guys are um you're brave and you're curious oh. and you're energetic and you're focused and you're yep. you're, you're courageous and you would not oh. be doing this if it won't work for that. I mean, think about it. You got to give yourself props. You got to deal with yourself with humor and right. compassion. All right, fine, and I'll do it. Let's All give right, ourselves a round of applause. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not. How often do you do that to say, you know what, I'm okay? Most of the time, you're going, oh, I really fucked that up, or why did I do that, or I should have done that, or why did I do that, and that isn't as good. Well, you know what? You're always doing the best job that you can. So yeah. there we go. That, that's well, beautiful. Thank that you. is beautiful. Oh, and, and thank you, you for allowing us to be able to give ourselves props. I know Cam might do it a little more than both of us, Eric and me. Oh, but, yeah. I have no uh, problem with that. Yeah, he had no, no, no <laughs> reluctance, right? Yeah, whatsoever. So but, Cam, you got to say, like, Cam, like, uh, you, you, you might have to talk people into accepting that, right, Cam? Like, yeah. have you said to people? You think and they it's go, hard no, here no. With, with these fins? I got to <laughs> I gotta take time to clap whenever I possibly can, okay? That's pretty I, much all I can do. I love it. I love it. Because, <laughs> ooh, um, ooh. It's one of Cam's <laughs> needs. Um, it's, yeah. There you go. There you go. Oh. Um, I was, I was going to ask too, because I know that you were just talking about, oh, realizing this is what I do want to do when I grow up. And I was listening to your podcast, ADD Comedy Podcast, and you've had some really cool people that you've had conversations with, one of which was Stephen Colbert. And you guys talked, reminisced a little bit about your guys' time at the Second City. And one of the things that stood out to me was when he was talking about a moment, and he was with you performing, of when he realized that this is what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. And I wanted to, this is not about Stephen Colbert. This is about David Brzezowski, this episode. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, if you guys want to hear about that moment, go to David Brzezowski's podcast, ADD Comedy with David <laughs> Brzezowski. But wanted to ask you, Dave, has there been a moment or just series of moments or all your life that have just led you to think, this is what I am called to do and, and what I want to do for the rest of my life? I, I remember, and I remember, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I, I think I was, I was, might've been 10 or 11 or 12. And I, I know I must've been 13 or 14 or something, a teenager. And I remember thinking to myself, this is one of, I want, I don't know how this came up, but I want to make a difference in people's lives. That's what I wanted to do. 
That was the focus. It wasn't that I want to be a teacher. It's I wanted to, I wanted to make a, 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 I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. Now, hanging out with all these people who have become A-list actors, they always knew what they wanted to do. Stephen Col Steve Carell always knew that he wanted to be a movie star. A uh, woman, mm -hmm. Jackie Hoffman, always wanted to be a Broadway actress. Steve Carell always, I'm sorry, Steve Colbert always wanted to be Steve Colbert. And that's what he became. Um, <laughs> so I was going through a lot of what am I doing on this planet? Why am I here? <clears throat> and what I realized when I started doing the improvisation was I found people that were working, that I was able to work with. I found people who we all together influenced each other. We made a difference in each other's lives. And as I started feeling that, I started to, to be drawn to a lot of teachers, improv teachers, who weren't teaching improv at that time. They were teaching theater at that time because that's who taught improv. And one of the people that I came across was a guy named Martin DeMott, the late Martin DeMott. And what Martin had was a, a uh, Martin had a, a, a philosophical, spiritual bend to what it was that he was doing. And as time went on, I started to follow down that spiritual trail until I hit a book. I know it was uh, when I first started working at the second, when I became the artistic director of Second City, um, I was thinking I need something else. And I came across a book called uh, Buddhism Plain and Simple by a guy named Steve Hagen. And what I realized was that was the best improv book written by someone who has no idea that they wrote an improv book. And <laughs> what it was is it hit me at a certain place where it's like, this is what I've been looking for. I've been looking for that intersection between spirituality and improvisation. And what you realize as you keep doing this is you realize that all improvisation is Buddhism. And it's just a matter of being present in the moment that you're dealing with. And when you're talking about stand-up, it's the same sort of thing, except you've got you've got um, you've got you've got your 10 minutes or five minutes or seven minutes or whatever it's going to be. You are no more alive and present and alert than when you are trying new material out and you're listening to everything that somebody's saying and you're paying attention to where the beats are and you're paying attention to the tempo that you have and you're paying attention to the pauses that you have. And and anytime, whatever it is that we're all doing right now is about realizing that we are alive at this moment and whatever the hell is happening, we are witnessing it. And so <laughs> it wasn't a series of, hold it, Cam. It wasn't, it wasn't a series of, it was, thank you, I, Cam was about to clap. It wasn't a series of, it wasn't like this epiphany that I had, but it was like, oh, that felt good. Oh, that felt good. Oh, that felt good. And then I just remembered what things kept feeling good. And here's another thing, yeah. just one more thing. I also remembered what didn't feel good, like hanging out with that guy didn't feel good and being in that improv company didn't feel good and having that teacher didn't feel good. And you start going, you start winnowing away that which you don't like and you start being attracted to that which you, which brings you uh, joy. Uh, and I, 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 I know. I've been so lucky, man, like that I came into Second City at the time that I came into Second City. Look at the people that I'm working with, that I worked with. And we loved each other and we hated each other. And we worked and we did some awesome, stupid, wonderful work <laughs> that I am so damn proud of. You know? That, that, that is absolutely amazing. And it, it, I feel like as I was listening to you on your podcast and then on your TED Talk, where you talked about, and I think I wrote down some of these quotes because uh, be present in the present and I will know what I need to know, when I need to know, what I need to know. All things about <laughs> staying in the moment and really enjoying and relishing that moment or sitting in it as you had in your TED, TED Talk. I'll have a link in the show notes, but it was, I listened to a TED Talk a week because my company sends an email with TED Talks to keep our morale up and keep us from going insane. But yours was one of the, my favorite ones that I've listened to in a long time because I've been trying to achieve what you were teaching. And I've been doing it with meditation where they're saying, you know, breathe, be in the moment, et cetera. And then to have someone that is so creative and so, you know, bringing it with this dynamic, um, with this comedy interweaved in it, it just clicked for me in a better way where I thought, wow, this is exciting. This is my style. And I, I feel like this podcast is a nice example of me failing, recognizing, and then starting to get back into it because I remember the early episodes, episodes one through five are not public anymore. Because I would do this with my brothers. I did this with my two brothers. And then I would record, I would edit 
And then I'd be like, I wasn't really listening to what they were saying, was I? Nope, I wasn't. And I would completely go off and I was just waiting for my chance to say something. And then I'd go off and say it. And so through hearing myself through a recording, I started to try and get better at that. I mean, I still don't listen to what Cam has to say, but that's for another reason. <laughs> yeah. No, kid, totally yeah. kidding. Get in line. <laughs> get in line. <laughs> but I think oh, it's well, but so, so those things that you perceive as failures weren't really failures at all. They were lessons wrapped up in a different thing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and the thing about that TED Talk that I had was there was an event that was in that TED Talk, and I'm going to spoil it, where I just humiliated myself in front of thousands and thousands of people. And I looked at it and I went, okay, that happened. What am I going to do with that? Because I can't undo that. And those <laughs> are the spiritual journeys that those are the, and, and, and so we want, we go, we want our life to be joyous and happy and all the time. But you know what? That's not how life is. So when you are when you are experiencing something like doubt, experience the doubt, live in the doubt. That doubt is going to lead you to something else. When you're joyful, experience the joyfulness, but know that both of those are containers that will eventually have nothing in them. And what you then and then what ends up happening is you get something else. And this too will pass, man. That's yeah. one thing I know. Whatever it is that you're going through, this too will pass. The shitty things are gonna pass, the good things are gonna pass too. That meal that you like, it's gonna be done. That booze that you like drinking, it's gonna be empty. That person you like kissing, she's gonna be gone. You know, like oh. those sort of things that are happening, yeah. That toothache that you have, that will eventually be gone as well. But all of these are experiences that we get to experience in the moment. And, and again, it's an improv lesson, but it's really a life lesson. But it's not an, just an improv lesson. It's any artist's lesson. Any artist is going through that same sort of thing. The idea of how do I take what it is that's happening in this moment and make it my own. And the best way that you can do that is to be honest. Do I like this being here? Do I not like this being here? What's my relationship to what's happening in this moment? Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think it's so, I know you talked about it too with, you were, before we opened up this part where you were saying, I've recognized the bad moments where I didn't like hanging out with this person or I didn't like doing this. And I think that's super important. And it's something that I am working on too, where there are these moments where I might feel bored or I might not feel uh, pleasant. And I also, I swear, I don't usually take quotes from people and then recite them here. But another one that you had was people like to feel in the present when things are pleasant. And uh, I, I think you're absolutely like right that. with that. And yeah. it, it sucks okay. with having cell phones and social media and stuff where these distractions can take you away from the moments that aren't present that you really should be paying attention to. to I don't know, I, I, I understand what you're saying and I really get that too, you know, and I, I'm always very aware of, of the word should because, you know, don't should on yourself. Um, so it's that <laughs> feeling of, it's the feeling of, are you enjoying what you're doing? Are you enjoying what you're doing? Then fucking do it, man. If that's what you're like, if you want to look at your phone, look at your phone. If you're getting yeah. something out of it, get something out of it. If you realize, oh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my phone, but oh, I'm, I'm standing at the Grand Canyon. Okay, the moment that you realize you're standing at the Grand Canyon, put your phone away and look at the Grand Canyon for a minute. You know what's not yeah. gonna happen? The Grand Canyon's not gonna go away. You get to look at the Grand Canyon, then look at your phone again, take a picture of the Grand Canyon, look at your picture. You know, live your life and <laughs> yeah. don't let anybody tell you what, you know, that you're doing that wrong. Yeah. I like that. yeah that's a good point. I like that. I'm going to take well, that I, quote too. Do whatever the fuck you want. And if you like it, do <laughs> yeah. it. But, but here's the, you know, but there's also stuff in the, there's the idea of like what other people think of you is none of your business. You know, that idea. Yes. And that's the greatest gift that you can give yourself. Because if somebody's saying to you, you're really looking at your phone a lot, you know, what's going on there? It's like, I don't have to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I like I'm my sorry. phone. <laughs> I, I, I like what's happening. I like my phone. I like what I'm doing. I like what I'm looking at. And you have no idea what I'm doing on my phone. You know, yeah. what I could be doing at that moment is donating money to some cause or can be helping a student who has a question. Or I could be playing words with friends. Or I could be, you know, I could like, do all those things. Mind your own fucking business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless, unless you're at a show, then, uh, then stay off your phone, right? <laughs> Um, no, yeah. Theater, or like. Yeah, I mean, Cam, that, that, that's true too, but that, that's about- At least my show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I sure. thought, Cam, you meant you being the performer, stay off your phone if you're at the show. Okay, I get it, be the recipient. And there's okay. nothing wrong with that either. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh God, so 
50 years, you've been doing this, you were a director, and now you're, you're teaching workshops. How has the teaching been? Because it sounds like from what you said earlier, what you want to do in life is help people. And so I feel like this is a great way of being able to do that. Um, have, have, there, have there been moments where there's been a lot of frustration or it seems like it's Well, yeah, short? well, let me just say, what I teach is very different than what the average uh, improv teacher teaches. Um, uh, what the average improv teacher teaches, I mean, what's the term that most people use when you hear improv? What is the word? I mean, what's the phrase? What's yes, the most man. important thing in it? Yeah, I don't teach that. I teach say no, ask questions, deny, talk about people who aren't there. Oh. Uh, don't be specific oh. at the beginning of a scene. Connect through an emotional connection that you have. If the scene is vague, then let the scene be vague. Um, I'm all about the emotional connection in that because I look at a lot of improv imp improvisers and you know, I was the artistic director of Second City for 11 years. I've traveled all around the world teaching people. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of lessons in improvisation because there are a lot of people teaching that yes and, but they don't really know what that means. And I don't wanna to get too into the weeds on this one. So all that I'm gonna say is I do get, I have been getting pushback about what I'm teaching because I'm teaching you, oh, what I'm teaching you is how to be a human being. I think most right. people don't like improvisation because, uh, because you know why people don't like improvisation to watch a show? It sucks. Most of it is <laughs> fucking horrible. If you told me that you're good, if you say, I'm doing a play, I'm like, I'm going to go see your play. But if you've got, I got a show that I'm going, I'm doing an improv show. It's like, nope, I'm not going to go to your dumb improv show. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you it's going to be crap. And it's going to be crap because the nine people up there that are all wearing shitty like t-shirts, ratty pants, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm spending yeah. $35, you know, parking, food, drinks, and you're up there and it looks like you just got off of a basketball game. You know, let's be <laughs> professional and let's do our work. And so I sit in an audience and I watch most improvisation. I'm thinking those people don't even know that they're on stage. And they're like you, Stefan, when you were doing this at the beginning, they're just waiting for somebody else to shut up so they can do a dumb joke. Right. And I, and I say that with total respect, man. You know, I say that with total respect. Oh, no. <laughs> because it's, my feeling I, is that those people don't know what it is that they're doing. And, and, and that might be me as the old man, you know, hey, you kids get off my lawn. That music <laughs> that you listen to is noise. But it could also be this. Are you liking what you're doing? Are people coming to your shows? Because I'm surprised that, that if both of those answers are yes. Yeah. So you and, sound like... <clears throat> You sound like you're like a, a mix of improv and theater. Is that was that what you would say? Like, well, you're kinda, yeah, yeah. I mean, I well, mean, obviously. Go ahead, sorry, Cam. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just not. I don't mean like improvisation. I mean like improv comedy, like the style form of a show improv, and and like traditional theater. Is that kind of what you try to combine? Yeah, or? yeah. I'm I'm doing I'm doing what's called long form improv. And long form improv isn't concerned with getting a laugh up, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. it's more about the relationship between the two people. It's more about, because when I go to an improv show and I, and I see this, I see an emotion, I see a relationship between the two people. What I want to do is I want to watch both of them volley back and forth their emotional epiphanies and not be clever and not do puns and not, and, and not go for the joke, but realize not, that the humor yeah. comes from you being honest in the moment that you're honest. And yeah. that's where the humor comes from. And that's the humor that you remember. You know, you remember somebody saying something that shocks you. Chappelle shocks you, you know. Um, uh, these people that, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, these, these people that just grab you and you go, oh, oh I, I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming. <laughs> you know, yeah. like real human yeah. beings, you know. Yeah. yeah. I love real shit. I, I, Talk about the real right. shit. Let's, let's, right. let's get and emotional, guys. Clever. Well, I, but here's the thing, Cam, if you're up there and you're talking about your life and you're talking about what's going on in your life, I'm going to watch it. But if you're up there, you know, making puns and making jokes and talking about, yeah. you know, other things, I'm like, all right, these are jokes. I don't know who you are. I don't know right. who you are, you know? Yeah. Yep. I like but, that. But, but you also have to find out who you are through making those mistakes, through, you know, winnowing away that which isn't, you know, to, to find out who the hell you are. So there's a lot of people who are going to do shitty stuff for a while. But after a while, they're going to realize what they're doing. Uh, I, I, w I wish I was passionate about this yeah. stuff. I don't know. One day. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. I know. I, I wish you'd have a little more energy. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Someday you'll find your dream. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Cam. <laughs> oh, man. Well, 
David, this has been amazing. I was going to say, do you have any workshops coming up? I think I saw one in October. I have Come one on. in October at the uh, the Improv in DC, um, but that just that was sold out. So if people go Sweet. to uh, yeah, I, I, I I've had a very good uh, pandemic, y'all. It's been a really yeah, good, good for pandemic. you. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so uh, most of, most of the workshops that I do sell out pretty quickly. So I'm really excited about that. Um, uh, if if people go to uh, and you can link this up, uh, just my yeah. website and just hit uh, just go to my website and you'll see some of the things that I've got going on. And you can also sign up for what I call my low impact mailing list, which means I probably will never mail you anything. <laughs> nice. Um, that's my low impact mailing list. Uh, but I've got that. Good on the knees. So, uh, so when I'm, uh, this weekend, uh, which is probably uh, will be gone by the time y'all the universe hears this, um, I'm working with a group of people called the Vintage Improv uh, Festival, and they're all improvisers over 50, and it's been really wonderful to work with these people. And we've got uh, I've got workshops coming up this weekend that are sold out, and I've got a show, uh, I've got a few shows that we're doing. And it's really, it's just been a fantastic time because so many people who can take improv, le so many people can take improv lessons from everybody literally all around the world, something that couldn't happen before. Um, yeah. I've got, a, I've, I literally have a million frequent flyer miles from the amount of flying that I used to do when I was in, when I was, you know, up until March. Um, and now I'm working with people literally all over the world. Uh, and it's a, it's really a golden time for, for improv. Um, wow. That's improv, you know, and again, just people no no seeing you from your chest up. Uh, again, not knowing if you're a centaur or not from your. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's Cam's joke. Cam or Eric's? Uh, uh, sure. It's Eric's joke. It's Eric's what? joke. <laughs> Eric Joe. Nice. I'm giving you credit, man. Come try it out. Credit. Yeah. Give me your credit. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you so much, David. We're going to go into the self help portion of the podcast and we're going to answer some questions. But before we do, we like to gather, we like to inspire ourselves with a nice quote, a motivational quote. So before I get into the one we have, I usually like to ask our guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days. Um, yeah, well, I, 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 I mentioned it before. It's the idea of this too will pass. Yeah. And what that means is realize what's going on, breathe through it and, uh, and know that this is not going to be the rest of your life. Um, that's and just, yeah. just sit, sit in it. Uh, and, and one more quote that was my mom, my mom's quote, I think, which is, uh, when you're, and this is something that I think is really important, you can't change the color of someone's eyes. And what that means is whatever it is that they're holding on to and they're stuck to and they're dealing with, that's what they're dealing with at that moment. And you just, you know, you gotta go, gotta step away from it knowing some people will get it and some people won't. And that's, that's you know, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's like a deep that. quote. I like both of those. Yeah, a lot. You, then you can use both of those or none of those. I'm going to add it to my pin board of all of David Verzowski's quotes that I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we already covered this portion through Stephanie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I hope you don't think I'm creepy. I'm like, I have these five quotes. So, uh... all right. He's got no, your face okay. printed out. Oh, and, <laughs> uh, and one more thing. I have a book that's coming out. So uh, all those quotes oh. will probably be in the book. Uh, tentatively titled A Subversive's Guide to Improvisation. Right now, we're coming up Perfect. to the point going to be publishing it uh with probably within the next month so uh i'm really excited about that and if anybody wants more information about that or to put on on my low impact mailing list you'll be you'll you'll discover some things from there so oh. there there so now we're now we're back into uh, here we go that's the uh that's the <laughs> that's great that's quote yeah, glad we didn't miss show. that one that's a big one yeah yeah book awesome well those are great quotes we're a little ashamed to bring our quote because it's not by a person per se it's actually by a robot and it's called Inspirobot. And what it does is it uses AI to generate some of the, or take some of the wisest words known to man and just mash them together so vehemently and uh, produce a quote for us. So we're gonna try and decipher this one. Eric is usually our good Inspirobot interpreter. So um, Eric, would you read this week's Inspirobot quote from our fan Claudia that she provided for us? This week's interpretation. <laughs> 
<laughs> Encourage honesty by frightening strangers. Encourage honesty by frightening strangers. <laughs> Encourage honesty oh. by frightening strangers. Oh, God. It just reminds me of like a police station where they're trying to interrogate somebody. And so they've got good cop and bad <laughs> cop. So he's oh. encouraging the honesty mm -hmm. by yelling at the, the yeah. soul that's being interrogated. That was the first thing that popped into my mind. Uh, the first thing that popped actually... in my head was uh, I was I, I'm I'm a mask I'm a masker I like wear my mask and I'm I'm one of those mask Nazis and I I walk down the street and I will say to strangers excuse me sir would you put your mask on and uh, I said to one guy excuse me sir would you put your mask on and he went fuck you did you hear me and I was like oh. <laughs> so at that moment uh, he I know I got. I got his honesty at that moment. I think I frightened him <laughs> yeah. and I got his honesty. But that is my, <laughs> like, that's a great phrase. That's a great quote. Scare the shit out of people and make them say what they have to say. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. I, and you know what? I was actually wondering about the best way to ask somebody to put their mask on. I don't know if I found that solution from that, but <laughs> at least I got the honesty part. Yeah, I, for me, I feel like just ask, and if and if they they're into it, they're into it, and if they're not, they're not. And uh, that's well, my my main my main reason is um, to shame them. So there we go. <laughs> yes, it's, it's thank shame. you. It's a that's, public so, service. It's a public so it's more service. for you than for anything, huh? Oh yeah. my God! But that's not what life <laughs> yeah. is about. This is all more for me yeah. than about you. So there we go. <laughs> Deal with it. This is my life, and you guys are co-stars. Thank you. Right. Right. Oh, your stage, huh? It would be even better if you brought a mask for them that just said shame on it or like a scarlet letter. A shame me, mask, I've been, yeah. I've been thinking about having, you know, having those masks. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, I love that. I love that quote. Can I hear it again, Eric, in the, in the dulcet tones that you said it? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Encourage honesty by frightening strangers. Nice. Good read, dude. That's <laughs> yes. really good. I, I love the dulcet. emphasis on frightening. Frightening. That was really Frightening. Good. Frightening. There's that E right there. Oh, yeah, don't, oh. don't, you don't neglect the E. Don't. It's my motto. Don't neglect the E. Don't neglect the E. <laughs> That's Eric's inspirational quote. Yeah. But, oh, because <laughs> Eric is an E name. Yes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I like those assholes who spell it with an A. Oh, my God. Eric. 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 <laughs> I've um, never Eric, seen that, but I don't think that yeah. that's a person, Eric. I think that you're just you, that you're looking for someone to hate, um, and you're just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eric. maybe. Eric. Eric. I think you're confusing it with Aaron and Aaron because there are A Aarons and E Aarons, right? Oh yeah, yeah. there are, yeah. there are, uh, and yeah. there's A A Rons. Oh A A A Ron A A Ron. Yeah, oh. yeah. that's right. Oh. That wasn't isn't that one of the greatest sketches ever? <laughs> yeah. yeah, ever. So good. So oh good. my god! Ever. For some reason, it's so impressionable that you just like can't get it out of your head. Once oh well, you watch and it that, was, friends, uh, you know? that was that uh, was I, I worked with Keegan uh, in uh, I was his director when he was in Detroit, and <laughs> what a what a mensch, wow. man! What a mensch, Keegan is such a mensch. And I worked with, uh, with Jordan Peele when I was directing uh, Boom Chicago in Amsterdam, and I, I met Jordan there. Um, wow. The guy, the guy that wrote that, Rich Tellerico, is a Second City alum, and uh, and that is one of the classic comedy sketches. We're talking about Key and Peele's uh, Substitute Teacher. Is that right, Cam? Is that what yeah. it's called? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What was that? Uh, what was the name of that writer? Uh, Rich Tellerico. T A L Tellerico. Uh, T A L Arico. Um, <laughs> Rich Teller, I don't know if that's good enough. <laughs> uh, but can, like he's written some great things. He's just a really great writer and a really good man. Uh, and, and, and again, I go back to, I can't believe all the, all the wonderful people I've had an opportunity to work with. Um, but yeah, A.A. Ron. A.A. Awesome. Ron. Oh, come on, Keegan, you know, international superstar. International, like, so good. Yeah. yeah. So good. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Incredible. Ah, well, incredible. Now, now that we're all inspired, I think mostly from the, the, the key and peel, um, let's move on to the questions. We've got our first question. This is from Reddit. It's found by our fan, Kim. Thank you, Kim. It says, <clears throat> got a sloppy tattoo from a reputable, reputable artist. Advice? I got a tattoo from a reputable artist with a great portfolio about two weeks ago. I paid on the higher end. It didn't come out bad, 
The line work in one particular area is awful though, shaky and scratchy and just so obviously messed up. It's been pointed out to me constantly. There's also a spot where it goes outside the lines. I'm just so heartbroken because I want to love this piece, but I can't. I'm a mix of pissed and sad, but I'm not sure exactly what to do. Any advice helps. Thanks with a heart. And that's sincerely by Ink Stinks. <laughs> um, Stefan, would you read the beginning of that again? Because there's so much bullshit in the beginning of that that I just, I'm losing my mind. Okay. Now listen, listen to what she's saying. Go read it. And I'll tell you when to stop. I got a tattoo from a reputable artist with a great portfolio about two weeks ago. I paid on the higher end. It didn't come out bad. Okay, I'll stop there. It came out bad, honey. It came out bad. <laughs> You're not happy with it. Admit uh, that it sucks. And just because everything that you said past that point is it's outside of lines. It's sloppy. It's not what you wanted. Hopefully it's not on her face. So it's like all those things I'm going, I'm thinking you are living in denial, honey. Because you've got a shitty tattoo and yeah. you aren't accepting it. And the only source of suffering is non-acceptance. You know oh, what you do? That's what you do. And this is what I would do if I were her. I would have another tattoo artist point an arrow and say, this is a shitty tattoo. And make that <laughs> tattoo that makes that tattoo work. Because there's no other way to make that tattoo That's work. That's a great except idea. Taking yeah. it, you know, just taking it, taking it, having it removed. Just just perfect fine line letters <laughs> the most best tattoo you could possibly get saying this is a shitty tattoo Pointing don't at get one tattoo. of these <laughs> yeah. oh my god yeah that would, oh that's yeah such a, like yeah, good yeah, idea. yeah 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 it's a, such a good idea what i i've got so many questions about that though yeah. <laughs> I, I, what is it a tattoo of how big is that t the tattoo Where's the right. tattoo? Because all right. those things, yeah, it could be, it could be a between the boobs tattoo. Is that what you're doing there, Eric? Like the it's classic, like a chest tattoo. A chest oh, tattoo. Yeah. A chest tattoo. Between the boobs, if you need it. Between the boobs, if you need it, you know. Between the boobs, if you got them. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but where's the tattoo? And yeah, because that's what I was thinking she... is like, depending on where it's at, maybe maybe you could just get a bigger tattoo over it. And just cover it, but <laughs> if you're it's your whole chest already, then that's kind of hard to do. <laughs> right, right. It sounds to me like she made she has. I, I also believe that this isn't the worst um, uh, move that she's made in her life. I bet yeah. there's a lot of things where it's like, I didn't. Why did I? Why? Why did I have that baby? Or why did I buy that house? <laughs> or how did I married? I I was told there'd be mermaids. Um, the, yeah, I, like, I bought a house. It's not bad per se, but I just yeah. can't <laughs> live in it. Right, right, right. The windows are off. Well, they're not really windows. They're holes in the they're wall. Like, jutted out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the neighborhood isn't bad. I mean, it's on train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Anytime you hear someone say that, you automatically think it's <laughs> you're like, oh, this person's lying. Well, for me, it's also when it's whenever somebody bad. says, you know, I really like this. Don't get me wrong. If they say, oh, yeah. don't get me wrong part, it's like, no, you really don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Just admit that yeah. you don't like it. Just admit that you fucked up. You got a bad tattoo and you're going to have to live with it. I think that's and the first part. also <laughs> find out where, where this human got their tattoo. You know, at what point? Where, yeah. I don't care who they got it from. Oh, from I'm gonna guess, do you, any, anybody here of these three gentlemen have a tattoo? No. All right. Yeah, I have, a, I have a few tattoos. Well, maybe on my centaur legs, yeah. but other than that, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, got a piece of, I got a piece of pencil lead stuck in my hand from the third grade. Does that count? Oh, yeah, yeah. me too. Look, can you guys yeah. see it? Yeah. It's ink, no. dude. It's kind of yeah. ink. Uh, <laughs> I, I went to a barber, I'm, this is gonna be a long, I went to a barber no. and he's cutting my hair and he was in a boy band at one time and now he's a barber in LA, cause LA. And uh, <laughs> he's cutting my hair and I said, and, and we're talking, we got, and he was telling me about this, this gig that he got that, you know, their truck broke down and they were in a small town and, and, they, and they had no way of getting anywhere. And, and, and this guy drove by who was able to give him a ride into town and he was a tattoo artist and they all decided, let's get a tattoo, let's get a <laughs> tattoo. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we'll get this guy to give us a tattoo. And I said, where's your tattoo? And he goes, uh, uh, and so he took, I, I gotta, I have to, I have to look at this um, uh, because I make sure that I'm doing this right. He, he took 
Uh, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. She'll sit through. He did this. He went. Oh he my! Took his lip and it said, uh, like "Giddy up" or something. Oh, he, that's, he had a tattoo that's dope. that said "Giddy up" <laughs> on his lip. Like right now, everybody, I'm I'm showing. I'm I'm taking my low my lip. I'm yeah. pulling it down, and it was like "Giddy up," and I'm like. Giddy up. Giddy up. Giddy up. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. That's, I like if that. people didn't believe him when he said he was a cowboy, he's like, oh, yeah? Giddy up. Yeah. <laughs> giddy up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All cowboys have giddy up. Yeah, giddy up. <laughs> yeah. This is our brand. This is where we yeah. brand ourselves. Yeah, and then on so, the top, it's, it's like, I'm a cowboy. Giddy up. Giddy up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People were like the giddy up. I don't know that you got to have the introductory. I'm the, the upper, the yeah. upper, the, yeah, the upper, upper lip. lip. The upper lip is like the introduction. It's like I'm a cowboy. <laughs> giddy up. <laughs> yeah. And then a horse oh. neighing on the tongue. Oh my Has anyone god! Anyone ever got yeah. a tattoo on the tongue? <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> a tattoo. A tongue tattoo. Oh, yeah. Man. You That's... have to like. You probably don't lose all your taste buds, right? Just the, good ones. Just, yeah. <laughs> just the good ones. Yeah. The ones are just yeah. permanently filled Pickles. with ink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yum. Yeah. Now the, all risottos taste like they have squid ink in them because it's just. <laughs> Go get tongue tattoos. I God. bet someone has a tongue tattoo. I will oh, bet for someone sure. has a tongue tattoo. For sure. Absolutely. Maybe this person here. Because if may, maybe I, that's the type I, of person they are. <laughs> I yeah, feel like that, that person who got that tattoo, it might have been her first tattoo. Yeah. Right. I think right. she got it Sucks. in a very public place too, like her forearm or I mean if she dresses a little more provocative, maybe like Eric said, between the, the boobies, because That's she said I a said. lot of people comment on it. So either she's sleeping with a lot of people, which we're not judging, but no. it could be that a lot of people are seeing her naked or People could be passing well, by. And wear that deep V neck. Frightening them with honesty, where they're like, oh, oh that tattoo's not bad. Nice callback. Nice callback. Yeah. <laughs> nice callback. Why does it look like Gumby having a seizure? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, I, I think to Cam's point, well, to David's point, be honest with yourself. Be like, it's a shitty tattoo. Because once mm -hmm. you get to that point, then you're going to realize I either can do something about it. Or I can highlight it even more and just make that a part of my being because I am proud of my mistakes. It's not a failure. It's just a lesson packaged up poorly with some ink. Or you could do like Cam said, and you could just, you could make it a little better, have another tattoo on top of it. And it's like the tattoo yeah. never happened. Yeah. So The tattoo that never happened. Yeah. It's like a tattoo <laughs> that never happened. Now there's just a big black square over it <laughs> but you you'll, you'll never know <laughs> just, just do your whole body just that tone yeah. so you're you're committing fully people have done that oh you should look that up that's weird i, I, I want another guy that uh, where at this other place where, at the same place where i got my hair cut he had he had it all man he had the face he had the neck he had the he had he had it all and, are you, are you... <laughs> um, and, and i was like wow wow Oh my I'm not going to judge, but I will say this. Your life is fucking over. But I'm not judging. <laughs> the resume destroyers. Oh, you, that's exactly it. He's yeah, a barber. Yeah. yeah <laughs> what resume? Like tattoos, <laughs> You're getting a haircut yeah, from him. Yeah. I feel like tattoos are also, I, I don't, I never got a tattoo, so I don't know how much they cost. But I feel like if you covered your whole body in tattoos, that's got to be tens of thousands of dollars? Question mark? Yeah. Yeah, unless you know a guy. Sure. I think one little, unless you know a guy who doesn't fill in the lines, but, <laughs> and, but it's, that, it's that feeling of, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can get a little one that costs probably $8,000. I don't know how much a tattoo costs. How much tattoo? Yeah, depending on how good you want it. And even then it might not turn out good. <laughs> I have a feeling you get what you pay for. <laughs> yeah, she thought this was a good you. artist, like a reputable, like had a bunch of followers on Instagram or something probably. And it's still... That sucks. <laughs> she probably paid a lot of money too. Man, if it's good. truly a reputable artist, they should honestly, they should be able to go back and get them to at Something, least attempt yeah. to fix whatever the fuck is going on with it. <laughs> I don't, I don't think you have to go completely. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, you think this is bad? <laughs> oh, Oops, no, did the whole arm. No. Oh, God. <laughs>
no, no, yeah. no, but you're, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, good luck, whoever you are. Good luck. We're, yeah, <laughs> yep. we're, we're going to move on to the next segment of our podcast, and the segment is Celeb Advice. This is where we give advice to celebs. Maybe we take their actions as examples. We'll figure it out. But we have this juicy gossip that comes from the Huff Post. The title is Channing Tatum wrote a children's book about dad daughter love. So before we get into it, we uh, like to take this time and ask our guests and go around and <clears throat> do some celeb impressions. But David, can you do any celeb impressions that you would like to showcase for this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I like like when when I saw that you did this portion, I'm like, yeah, I, I, this is not going to be. This is going to be my lesson. This is how I'm going to. No, I don't know. I do one, and <laughs> oh, I, I do one celebrity impression, and it's really good, but it's so obscure. It's really. <laughs> One of these like, no one else is doing it. And <laughs> so, so you could do it, and then everybody will look it up later and be like, oh, wow, that guy was amazing. They can look it up later, and they can go, that's go. really, that's a narrow talent. So it's, oh, uh, it's uh, 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 have you seen, oh, my God, have you seen It's a Wonderful Life? Mm -hmm. yes. The yep. movie. All right. There's a guy in it, Mr. Potter, Lyle, Lionel Barrymore. All right. How many people in the world are doing Lionel Barrymore impersonations now? Well, there's Dave Rosowski. It's right funny here. you mentioned, because we also had uh, that one lined up. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, um, uh, so uh, do, I, do I do it now? Do I say it? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Take it away. Please. Right. Lionel Barrymore so, doing, getting a tattoo. No, no, right. or, or whatever you want. Whatever you want. Oh, well, I'm going I'm to do what he's known for, you know, I'm not going to go, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Um, Everybody knows. All right. There's the scene where, uh, 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 so Lionel Barrymore is yelling at, um, uh, the, what's his name? Uh, the star of the movie. Uh, uh, anyway, so uh, everybody. Jimmy, right now, Jimmy Stewart. Thank you very much, Jimmy Stewart. Like, I have that brain fart. So this is, uh, so this is it. So it's, uh, it's him, it's Lionel Barrymore yelling at Jimmy Stewart, like, you once called me a warped, frustrated old man. What are you but a warped, frustrated young man? <laughs> Lionel Barrymore. Lionel Barrymore. That was uh, great. Well done. Well done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, no you knocked Cam's screen off. That was so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, lights yeah. out. Lights yeah. out. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, like uh, one it. more follow-up question. I don't know if it's accurate, but uh, but it sounds like it is, and I will look it up later to confirm. Please look it up later, Cam. <laughs> how how did you find out, David, that you could do that impression? I don't know. I don't know. It's the same way that I figured out I could do the sound of a uh, wine pouring into a glass. Are you ready for this? Yes, right. please. Here we go. <laughs> oh my god what? oh my the god heck? that's amazing i right? want to get that looked at I, <laughs> like, like, you know, were you just messing around that? and yeah I where did you get cam, that i have no idea i don't know all that i know is one day i woke up and it's like <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know that's a natural talent huh the only nice. way that that would be the only way that that would be any cooler is if you had a tattoo that was like cheers Right there, as you did it. Yeah. Right. For me, it would be L'Chaim. Uh, uh, L'Chaim! <laughs> that is amazing, oh, though. That's really cool. Uh, wow. I guess that's an impersonation of, of uh, a rosé going into a, a glass. So that is an impersonation. Yeah. I could tell it was a rosé. That was beautiful, yeah. 2017, yeah, Napa yeah. Valley. Very yeah, nice. 2017. Yeah. Right. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, David. Birth. Those were wonderful impersonations um eric <laughs> do you do you have any new ones this week that you'd like to share i don't have any new ones but i'm inspired now to go after the low-hanging fruit of a of a jimmy stewart impression I, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna go for it now oh, not please. right now not right now oh, oh okay <laughs> okay okay but i'm gonna um, consider we're... it <laughs> okay. Okay. and then david and i can go on the road and we can uh you know, once oh. once things open back up and we can do uh, these scenes. Definitely. Scenes can... from movies that no one cares about <laughs> anymore. Like none of it. None of it. In none of it. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. We're gonna do the entire Mr. Smith goes to Washington. It's like 
Why? <laughs> why? Why? We could why? use that right now, though. We could. We could, right? We could. We could. That's true. Uh, That's true. Yeah, not oh. a bad choice. Uh, in my joking. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's all right. Bad. So, so Eric, when you do that, we can both do those. We can do that scene from It's yes. a Wonderful Life, right? Uh, yeah, do it. I was I was gonna try and actually pursue not now but at a later time a rosé bottle popping so that or a champagne bottle popping so then we you and I could do like the I guess you don't need me I don't know what I'm gonna do anymore nope, I don't nope, know nope. step up your game son oh yeah. man God all right well I'm gonna pass to Cam do you have any celeb impressions or beverages being poured that you can do impressions of. Um, I can do a can opening. It's specifically a uh, a lemonade truly can. Yeah, ready? Oh! <laughs> Beautifully orchestrated. Our listeners are going to be none the wiser. That's what you get for not, not watching the video that we don't publish. So. <laughs> I thought it was like a cheers, my bad. Oh, it's a good oh, one. Was, I was like, oh yeah, good. me too. I have one. <laughs> that was great and you can fake pour it too and if you want i can be there for that one <laughs> amazing all right we're gonna get into the article eric if you wouldn't mind reading it with those bringing back those dulcet tones but sure <laughs> crank it from inspirabot to really excited celebrity goss announcer but first who's got the channing tatum impression oh i'll go for it I don't know. <laughs> I You're think just I'm just going to come across well, as a douche. Like douche yeah, yeah. That'll guy. be perfect. Thank so you. Like myself, I guess. I thought, I I thought you are already doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it the whole time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Channing Tatum wrote a children's book about a dad-daughter love. Channing Tatum just shared his favorite role to date being a dad and he's adding children's book author to his resume too the 40 year old actor produced and directed on monday announced that his first children's book the one and only sparkella will be published the book according to its website is a charming ode to self-esteem and the love between a father and daughter guys i don't know about you but things got a little weird for me in quarantine <laughs> Janning wrote in his announcement Monday, I ended up accidentally locking myself in my seven-year-old daughter's room, and I ended up finding my inner child. So this is what I created for my little girl. From what it is, I guess, the little girl in me. <laughs> he adds, this is also for all dads that might have a little girl. Wear whatever, dance however, and be as magical as you can, because I promise they will return the love. And that's it. I think that's the end. That was the end. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's a good way to end it. You know, you never don't. You, you always end an article on whatever Channing Tatum says. That's true. Just, that's true. That's true. Even yeah. where we were supposed to prompt it with a question asking for advice, it just ended with what Channing Tatum said. Channing Tatum. <laughs> Tatum. Chan 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 Chan. Um, Tatum. Okay. Uh, remind me what we're supposed to be doing right now, because I got a bunch of fucking comments about this. <laughs> We, this is a good time to add the comments in because I don't know what advice we can give to change. Oh, this is an advice. I mean, for me, like, right, I accidentally locked myself in my daughter's, my seven-year-old daughter's room. Like, what? How would you, why would you lock the door? Like, what's the purpose? You know how a door lock works? Are you familiar? Like, you have to do the maneuver to lock the door. And if you're in there accidentally locking the door, how do you accidentally lock the door? Two, three, a million questions, way down the line. <laughs> What was your intention going in there in the first place? Were you hiding there? Were you, what were you doing there? What were you yeah. doing there? And I, you know what they <laughs> didn't leave in there was the detail of how long he spent locked in there. I bet it was probably a good month and he couldn't long figure to out how to get out. <laughs> and then, yeah, well, he found his daughter's crayons, the eight pack of Crayola, and he was like, book, when he came out. So they're like, <laughs> I guess we should publish this because oh, Channing Tatum. He wrote it. a book. <laughs> <laughs> His daughter's the ghostwriter. What is the book about? Did it say? Did I miss that part? Um, it is it's about a, it's a charming uh, ode to self-esteem and the love between a father and daughter. That's not what it's about. That's the theme of it. 
So it, his it, daughter. That's not what it's about. That's true. That's yeah. very true. Um, uh, and, and the title is called The One and Only Sparkella. How do we feel about the name of Sparkella? It sounds like Sparkella. And that's not something <laughs> you can talk about with your daughter. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's like a teenage book or, or above, I think. Someone should have said uh, uh, Channing. Channing. But his name's Channing. So, you know, any name is, you know, any. Uh, he, He's, he's, he's dealing with a Channing name. <laughs> that, that's Sarkella. true. But we don't know. So I got a lot. Of, I, 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 have, I have more questions too. But the big question is, how do you lock yourself in that room? How long were you there? And did he say the little girl in all of us? The little girl in all of us. That's right. Can you read that line? The little girl in me. Oh, the this little is... girl in me. Yes. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah. Yep. So I created this for my little girl from what it is, I guess, the little girl in me. Maybe he spent longer than a month. I think Channing Tatum has lost his mind. I mean, whatever mind he had left, it's just... Do you, so you think he spent longer than a month locked in his daughter's bedroom? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <Effectively. laughs> and he found Channing, all the snacks under the bed, and so he was able to survive on that. But I feel like he was in there long enough. It's like solitary confinement for Channing Tatum. And his daughter, his daughter's probably a lot more independent than Channing is since he can't get out of a daughter's bedroom. So, I mean, God, I wow. think this is just a ruse. You know what? I think he truly wanted to write a legit book. And then they came back and they're like, this is fourth grade reading level. We're going to have to see <laughs> yeah. your daughter. This is okay. This is a children's book. Now we're going to have to tell. And I, you know what? I bet he didn't even illustrate it. Oh, no, he did not illustrate. No, he, he did not illustrate. <laughs> he did not this illustrate. is just a money grab. It, it, oh. it, clearly, this is a PR move. And so he's, how old is, how old is this story? Pretty fresh. The story? Uh-huh. I think it's about a week old. Oh, yeah, so he the book wrote isn't out book yet. During, he wrote it during quarantine. Yeah. Cam's got it pre-ordered. He knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of what you guys Sign. say, I'm actually really excited for this book because I have a lot of self-esteem issues. So if you don't mind, I'm picking it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's there's a lot there's a there's there's a I, I, I want to know more about this story. And first and I also want to know a friend of mine wrote a book, but he told me I wrote a book, but what he really wrote was a pamphlet. You know, really? it's not like, it's oh, like, right. I'm yeah. sorry, this isn't, I, I, this isn't a book. <laughs> Was it it's trifold? Like to be a, it's, it's basically like two trifolds stapled together. It's like, <laughs> you did not write a book. You wrote a pamphlet. And it's maybe just a, just an, um, just a, 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 an amalgamation of blurbs. You can it tell by the bullet points. Of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a book. It's not a book. And so I want to know how, how, long, how long his book is. And was it optioned yet? So that's another L.A. thing. <laughs> <laughs> was going to play Sparkella in the movie? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. <laughs> Sparkella. Sparkella. That sounds like a rap name to me. Sparkella, Sparkella. and like baby. Uh, sounds like a ripoff from Cinderella. Or Sparkella Fitzgerald. Oh, oh nice you know what david we might have to have you come back when we have this ordered and shipped to our house and we'll do, we'll a, do a reading, reading. yeah you, <laughs> wait wait did i just discover that you all live together when you say our house yeah we're, we're all in different rooms but we actually hate each other <laughs> we can't stand each other but we get yeah. we get together for the podcast we get together for the guests like the kids <laughs> we're like you know what let's just pretend like we love each other and then we hang up afterwards we're doing and we it for talk. the kids we're doing yeah. it. We yeah. are. Yeah. Just like yeah. Channing. Um, I, I, Stephen, <laughs> when you said we're supposed to be giving advice, like what advice are we supposed to give people from this book? I'm not really. I, I, oh, I, I, because I feel like the advice feel like, is for Channing. Wanna... Oh, it's for Channing. Yeah. The advice Any for PR me, moves. Channing, Good PR moves. Here's here's the advice. Don't lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You probably Don't need the lock. childproof Channing Tatum's house. Mm -hmm. for Channing Tatum. I wonder if his daughter locked him in there. He didn't even right. actually. His yeah. daughter was like, oops, <laughs> daddy, I can't open the door. Or it's got one of those, uh, you put it over the handle so it just spins and the kid can't open it. Right, right, right. It's childproof, but it's really Channing proof. Yeah. <laughs> we Channing proof the room. We clearly Channing proof the room. Uh, this room has been oh. Channing proofed. 
from the inside. It's coming from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, I, and I wonder if the family even noticed that he was gone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, yeah, did, does, this, does life seem better to you? I mean, I know we're in a something. pandemic, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. It was the third book he wrote it. this way. And then he came... Locked in his son's room. <laughs> locked, in his, like, locked in the neighbor's son's room. Locked in the car. Locked, locked in the <laughs> car. Dog oh. locked him out. Oh, God. It's, a, it's the, 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 the Tatum Channing series. Locked in the... <laughs> locked in the dot adu that's what it is so, so there was there was a there was a series of crime novels where it was like a is for adultery right b is for blood c is for whatever chicago crime um, would, right a crime <laughs> and this would be locked in the closet locked in the car locked in the museum Locked in the bathroom. Wow. This is actually kind of a good idea. Kenny Tatum's book, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah, nice. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. think if we do it from the perspective of like a four year old, it could make for some really ripe reading. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, good. I feel like we've given Channing some good advice. So, anything else before we move on? I want to apologize uh, to Channing for not knowing any, <laughs> anything about him at all. I don't know anything about him at all. And, and, and this is, again, old man. Uh, my girlfriend has her finger on the pulse of what's going on with most of the world, so I would go, who is he? It's a he, right? That's yeah. right. Yes, that's right. It's a he. Who is he? And she'd say, yeah, you're not going to know him. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> right, great. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure Channing's got other preoccupations on his mind. Like he's probably locked in another room right now. So I'm sure and here's he's another thing: that. I don't think he knows who the fuck I am. So fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, I you, like the. You've never around. seen Step Up? You've never seen Step Up? Nope. Magic Mike. <laughs> nope. Twenty One Jump Street. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you guys are just making up words now. You're just making up titles. <laughs> oh. Mike the Boundary. Hmm? Fantastic, seen, Mr. Goober. Sparkella. <laughs> Right, right. Two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two. All right. All right. I guess well, two you and Channing don't cross paths, huh? <laughs> two Sparkella, two Furious. God, I'd love to see Vin Diesel in that one. That would be amazing. <laughs> he's the main. He's the titular character. <laughs> That's a good word, Eric. That's really a good word. That's a good word. Good on you, Eric. Good job, Eric. Yeah. It's on my calendar today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, <guys>. well, <laughs> you could have just let us think that you knew that word this whole time you know yeah <laughs> it's this really a good word it's a really good and if you're if you're as you are eric you're, if you're in the music industry that's a you know it's a, it's it's his titular um uh album and we know that it just has his name in it right that's what Who? titular means what titular <laughs> no means. yeah right yeah all right good Titular being title, title character. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yeah, but yeah, so this, I, I this don't has been. Think, I don't think a lot of people know what to titular means. Titulating. That's all. I did not. I did. I, that was like one of the. Well, maybe it, I have. Maybe I wasn't listening. I wasn't sitting in life, and so <laughs> I was on my fucking phone, being a douche, being like oh, Instagram. Somebody said titular, and it just went in and out. So. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, David, for stopping to help absorb it because now I feel like I'm never going to forget titular. That was the education <laughs> for the podcast. Exactly. It, and, yeah. and, and, and you go, like, don't blink. You're going to miss the educational portion of the podcast. That, that, that's right, because it'll pass by faster than a Channing Tatum book. So with that, <laughs> with that, we have come to the end of our podcast. But before we end, I wanted to, we wanted to extend a huge thank you to you, David, for being on. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank I you loved know. it. It was really great. I had no idea, like, like a good improv scene. I had no idea what I was going to experience or what I was doing. And <laughs> every moment was really awesome. It was really great. So thank awesome. you. All. Thank you. Thank you. And I just awesome. wanted to ask, <clears throat> Cam, we talked about this. No, but we also <laughs> wanted to ask <laughs> We also wanted to ask you, where can people find you? What, can, what have you got to plug? I know you said it once, but you know, if we titulate on it, then 
to titulate. absorb it. I don't know if I'm using it right. I'm still trying you know it on for you size. Know what? I feel it's, titillated. I think I think you I think you you came up with a new word, and I don't mind that at all. Um, uh, if you just go, uh, so I, I'm very specific on what social media I do with what. Um, so uh, I do most of my political rantings and using the fuck word in uh, Facebook and uh, and Twitter and, and Twitter. Um, Instagram is mostly about food pictures of which I am fantastic. Raz hashtag Raz eats food. I'm not kidding. If you go hashtag <laughs> Raz eats food, you're going to see some great food pictures. Um, <laughs> and uh, what are the other ones? Uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, you... uh, www.davidrozowski.com. There's some really great videos on there of, of shows that I've been in, people that I've worked with. Uh, and that's where the podcast comes in. So uh, it's ADD Comedy with Dave Rozowski. I've got probably about 250 episodes of it. Uh, nice. Since I started writing the book, I've put it aside. But the one that you mentioned, Stephen, is really great. The Steve Colbert one is great. The Steve Carell one is really great. Yes. Um, uh, um, and then there are people that people don't know. Like uh, there's one uh, by a guy named Carl Gottlieb. And Carl Gottlieb, you're like, he's, he's a history of improvisation. He was with the committee, but he wrote this movie called Jaws. And he wrote this other movie where you go, how did one person write these two movies? The Jerk. He wrote both of those. Oh, wow. And oh. he was a guest on my podcast and he was fantastic. So it's like a little repository of improvisation and stories, and it's been really great. It's just really great, and I, I want to come back to it as soon as I can. Uh, but as you know, a podcast is a lot of work. It's a lot of work to put together. <sighs> that it is. That it is. But you know what? We'll make it a little easier for people for, to get you some more fans. We'll put a link to everything that you've described in the show notes, plus the podcast, plus those three highlighted episodes. So I feel like they're a good palette palate introducers they're not cleansers. yeah maybe a palate cleanser from our shitty podcast you can get into, into your so that's great uh well it's been awesome. really fun y'all it's been really really yeah. fun okay. it's been a blast well thank you so much cam by the way I, cam and eric do you guys have anything that you guys want to plug uh not that will be coming out by the time this comes out <laughs> so no children's books I'm all good. okay yep. yeah all right i'm still all writing right. it Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, and we'll talk at you next week. Bye bye. Later. <laughs> David, that was that was a blast. <laughs> that was, so that was fun. a really good episode. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. really really fun. And I just want to say real, real quick, right now, my phone is about to die. So if I cut off, that's why. But I just want to say this has been a blast, and it was, I'm definitely you got a fan of me. So I love Can it. Can you just be I'm honest, so Cam? Here. Just be like, I don't want to talk with you anymore. No, <laughs> no I'll keep my hands here. Up. <laughs> if it shuts off, you know that it wasn't. Really I loved it. I loved it. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. And oh. uh, let me know when it's going to be out. And uh, this is just mm -hmm. been a hoot. Really. Hoot. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. I was just going to say it'll probably be out in about two weeks, give or take. Um, I'll let you know. I will send you the show notes and everything just to make sure I've got all the links. Oh, and then I was going to ask for the cover art. Um, can I use a picture of yours from either your site or somewhere? Okay. Absolutely. Um, uh, if you, uh, if you email me, I'll email you something. Just remind me. Uh, per already... Perfect. Great. Great. Okay. Um, wait, there awesome. was something else. If, you know, it's so interesting when you said, um, to Cam and Eric, do you have anything to plug? And then Cam said, well, not that's going to be seen for a couple of weeks. I, my first thought was, <laughs> you know, if you know that it's coming out in the future, you can add something like whatever it is that I did, I'm sorry. You know, like just to add something. I don't know if that makes any sense. Where you're going, yeah, I, I'm going to plug this. Yeah. I did it, and I'm really sorry. You'll know what it's talking about when I when this comes up. <laughs> That's good. good. That's good. good. I like that. By, good by the way, that the Air, Cam, if you've got something that you want to say, you can say it, and then I can just put it into. I can edit it in post and you can be like, that, oh, yeah, that was show. me just thinking out loud. Cause I was like, Oh, what I have going on, what I have going on. And I have a show in Prescott tomorrow, but it's not like, so my head was like, you have that going on, but it's not really like, do you, do you have a website uh, you know, that people you know can what I mean? find, find you at, you know what I mean? No, not a website. Cause I haven't yeah, been in it long enough you. to feel like I'm, I need a website yet. I'm still trying yeah. to just develop, you know, I totally understand. I, Put totally the can before the horse. Stuff, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I love it. Um, all right, great. I'm going to head off and make some dinner. Oh, real Perfect. quick. I don't know if you would remember this is super specific, but what was that book you said? 
that you read that where he wrote but he didn't realize it was an improv uh, buddhism plain and simple uh, uh okay. by steve hagan and i gotta tell you um it really is a fantastic um it's a fantastic uh, primer if you will on buddhism and it doesn't hit you over the head there's not a lot of foreign words that you're going to do you know it's, it's like i I, I, I have that book dog-eared okay. and there's just so much in that that I just love. And if you, and if you have awesome. any other questions about yeah. it, uh, about that book, Cam, or any other book like that's like that or books that I love. Uh, oh man, you can give me a whole me, list. <laughs> yeah. um, just let me know because I, I, I got to okay. tell you, this list of books is just, it's, it's, it, it's changed my life. Literally changed my Sweet. life. Sweet. I'll find you on Instagram and stuff and uh, I'll stay in touch for sure. I love it. Oh, uh, thank you all. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Right. Thanks, bon, yeah. bon appetit, thank you. David. Thank you so thank much. You. Cheers.